Hello there, welcome back, and welcome to part 34 of my build log of the Trumpeter 1200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I'll be looking at the Veranda Cafe Palm Court, um, showing you the sort of the modelling stuff that I've done there, uh, and I will also address one of the comments that is quite prolific in the comment section at the minute, um, concerns about stability of the model in the water and that kind of thing, so I will talk about that briefly at the end of the video as well. Uh, Veranda Cafe and Palm Court is turned out to be one of the harder rooms to do, um, mainly because I was just conscious that there's so many windows, and in comparison to a lot of the rooms I've done, it's incredibly visible. Um, so I was quite careful to make sure I did something that I was happy with, um, and I've added a few little extra sort of additions to this room, which I am... Um, I like and I think make it stand out a wee bit more. So uh, without any further ado, I will stop talking and I will hand over to myself from about two weeks ago when I started looking at this room. So the first job as always was to fit the flooring in place on the Veranda Cafe Palm Court. It's got a very nice sort of French style tiling um, and this is a fairly tricky space to actually fit this flooring into. So I cut out a big piece to start with, then worked around the uh, rims of the room with a sharp blade, and then finally stick the piece down with Gorilla Glue. As you can see, I have just had to respray these windows for the veranda and palm court. As you can see, this is the photo etch sheet for the windows, which I'd already painted brown. So I've just had to go over and paint these particular windows in white because these are the only sills on the ship that were painted white. So to put glass in the Veranda Cafe windows, what I'm doing is to start with, I'm gluing the windows to the glass sheet that I'm going to use. So I'm adding a relatively small amount of glue. And once that's dried, <clears throat> I can cut out the window with my blade. As before, I'm just going to make sure that the um, the window fits before actually gluing it, and it does. So now we're back to what I've been doing previously. So adding some glue around the. Uh, sides of the window. Sticking it down and then just letting it dry. So I'm just carrying on with that now for the remaining seven windows. It's quite a long and laborious process, um, but it is worth taking your time over. The particularly tricky thing is that 
when CA glue dries, you sometimes get sort of vapour um, adhering to the window, which then, of course, ruins its transparency, and you get a sort of translucence effect, which, you know, really doesn't help the look at all. So um, minimal amounts of glue really are, are the way to go here. And now, having cut them out, I am actually sticking these windows in. Again, small amounts of glue really are the way to go. Make sure the windows are properly sized so that they can sit into the apertures created for them. Otherwise, the windows will sit proud, and that doesn't look very good. And then, small amounts of glue. You don't need much. Veranda Cafe Palm Courts is a room that probably would have been used at the time I'm setting my model, about three o'clock in the afternoon. So, as it's very visible, I am going to use quite a few figures in here. So I'm just painting um, a few of the sitting down figures that I have, various different colours, trying really not to go for anything too samey on any of them. It is quite a long and laborious process, this, but it is worth taking your time over because, as I always say, these sort of little details are the thing that brings the model to life. So I really do think it's worth spending a bit of time Doing a bit of research, working out what colours were fashionable, all that kind of thing adds to a model. And so here with the matte black paint, I'm just going over and giving everyone a pair of black shoes. Uh, and a few people are getting some black hairstyles as well. It's just again, a means of sort of making the characters look a little bit different to each other, separating them out. Some are bald, some get black hair, some get brown hair, some get blonde hair. And here, what I tend to do once I finish painting the figures, I just tend to look over each of them in turn, just to make sure that I'm actually happy um, with each of the paints on each of the figures. Just make sure that there isn't anything that just requires a little bit of touching up. So here, you know, a couple of the people didn't quite have enough coverage, so I'm just adding a bit more paint. And here I'm just adding a wee bit more detail to some of the standing figures. In this case, just the, uh, the black brims on the steward's caps. Uh, and just little detail like this, again, I think it sort of just makes the, uh, makes the, the characters stand out a wee bit more. And so here, once again, I am cutting out the furniture, ready for cleaning and sanding and then lastly painting. And I have to say, this is a, this is a process I'm tiring of now. Um, it does leave you with a very nice model, but my word, it's a laborious process, cutting out inordinate amounts of furniture for each room. Um, so I'm, yeah, I am pretty glad that this is one of the last rooms I will be doing. Um, obviously, for reference, these clips are all sped up. I think I've sped this one up eight times or so, so I am taking a lot more time over this than the video appears.
So here I'm doing the classic upside down masking tape trick to stick the furniture down prior to painting. Um, and as always, this really is a useful technique, really speeds up painting, um, keeps everything organized, keeps things in, in place, you know where everything is, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's a good little technique. technique. Um, and here is the actual painting. Uh, I'm using a paint which is Humbrol Max 103, it's a sort of cream colour. Uh, you'll notice I'm also recycling some of the furniture that I didn't use in one of the rooms. Uh, a couple of the tables there are brown, um, but once they've been painted, they will be fine. And just going over once again for a second coat, making sure everything's nicely covered. And then we'll be ready to stick things down. As you can see, I have put in two walls to separate the two halves of the Veranda Café Palm Court off from each other. Um, I should have taken this photo before I added people and furniture, but I am a bit of an idiot and I didn't do that, so apologies. Um, as you can see, the uh, the walls have been decorated with the Veranda Café uh, designs, which you can get from the printouts, which are included in the description below. And these just mate up against the back wall of the first class smoking room and you can see that I've also added that design onto the back wall of the smoking room as well. Um, with regards to the external facing walls of the Veranda Cafe Palm Court, I have decorated them but only in a very specific location. You'll notice that I've only done it on the face which adjoins onto the smoking room side. And the reason for that is because you can't see any of the other walls once the piece of plastic is actually in situ. And I really don't see the point in fitting stuff like this if you can't see it. Happy to do it where you can see it, or even when it's difficult to see, but I don't see any point in doing it where you can't see it. So that's the rationale there. And now I'm just starting to sort of fiddle around with designs, seeing what, you know, fits where, what works, what doesn't work. Just having a sort of little play before I actually commit to anything properly. Um, it's a tough room to work in here because there isn't a huge amount of space, so um, it did take a bit of time just to work out what was going to be best. It's interesting this. I found the Veranda Palm Court the hardest room in the ship, or the hardest rooms in the ship, to appoint sort of furniture plans in because they're so small. Um, and I'm wanting to put so many people in that I'm just conscious that the space is going to be very constrained. But I'm also conscious that putting too little furniture in also looks a little bit unrealistic. You know, however many chairs are there, what, four, five, six, seven? Seven chairs and a sofa with three tables doesn't look exactly realistic for one of the major restaurants on the ship. Um, so it's a real balancing act. Uh, and it's, it's a bit tricky. I mean, the actual rooms had two tables like this in the middle, a sofa like this here, and a sofa in the bay window, and then sort of collections of tables around the outside as well. Now, I know that's obviously impractical for this, but I'd sort of, I'd like to get an other table in here if I could. But it's just proving quite tricky to arrange, you know? Anyway, I'll have a think and carry on. As you can see, once again, just trying out different ideas, seeing what works, moving things here and there, seeing how I can tessellate things in place. Just conscious that people also need to fit into this room. So this is a bit better. I've got a single another table in here with two chairs. I'm conscious I'm trying to keep this area here clear, because although I'm not showing it, this would have been the revolving door into the smoking room. So it feels like it's worth keeping that clear. Turning that table around by 45 degrees helps because you get the chairs sort of tessellating into the room a wee bit better. Um, I quite like that sofa up against that wall. That looks a bit better proportioned to me. It doesn't look, doesn't look jammed full of stuff, but equally it doesn't look stupidly empty. It would probably go with that. And indeed, that is what I resolved to do. Um, so in this clip, I am starting to glue stuff down, sticking people into the chairs, that sort of thing. Um, 
and then actually gluing furniture down as well. I want this to have a sort of busy, bustly kind of feel to it. This is a one of the prime spaces with ocean views on a on a clear, crisp afternoon. So I want this to be feeling like quite a sort of busy cafe. Right, so that is the veranda and palm courts done. And as always, um, I've tried to set out a few scenes. Actually, it's not done yet because there's a few standing people to go in, but sitting wise, it's done now. So, you know, for example, we've got a nice group of, I think, gentlemen sitting around this table having a chat, an elderly couple just enjoying the ocean view. Maybe this couple over here have had a bit of a falling out. One person sitting on the edge of the sofa, the other sitting on the other side. Maybe they're having a little bit of a tiff. And a nice collection of people here having a wee chat. So again, I'm just sort of going for... I'm just going for sort of realistic kind of... The sort of usual happenings that you might expect on a liner at sea. You know, people just entertaining themselves, trying to pass the time of day, that sort of thing. Um, the next step is to add people, so I need to add a few stewards and stuff like that, uh, and I've got a few standing people, and for the standing people I'm going to sort of arrange them as if they're about to walk out of the door, um, again, because I think that gives the, the model a wee bit of life, you know. So I'm just attaching some of the uh, steward figures. I've done four in total, I thought that would be sufficient, two in each side of the cafe. So I'm going to place one here. Just sort of standing by the door, waiting to greet anyone coming in. And the next is going to be walking over. To a table. as if someone's just called him over. In the other side, things are a bit different. I'm going to have both actually waiting on tables. So one waiting on that table with single person, and the other standing over the table of four gentlemen, perhaps saying something like, I say, could we have another pot of coffee or something along those lines. Notice that both of these stewards are conspicuously ignoring the table where the couple are having their little argument. Slight social embarrassment going on there. Quite a few people have asked me, um, am I worried about adding all this weight above the waterline? Is it going to make the ship capsize? Um, so in answer to that question, in its purest form, is it going to capsize? I don't think so. Um, because if you look, this ship is really quite stable in the water. Um, she floats on an even keel now, and that's just because I've spent a bit of time fiddling around with some lead ballast. Um, so in terms of capsize, no, I'm fairly happy that she's not going to capsize. Um, however, adding weight above the waterline isn't just dangerous in terms of capsizing risk. 
um, it also generally decreases the stability of your ship. Um, <clears throat> and certainly this is now less stable than she was when I didn't have the superstructure. But that's to be expected. Um, this is where we're at currently. So this is the ship with everything I have added up to now. All of ADEX interiors and with the boat deck piece above ready for the boat deck to be fitted. And I would say, looking at the bow, we're probably about three or four millimetres too high out of the water. Similarly, if we go all the way to the stern, again, we're probably about three or four millimetres high out the water. And because my waterline has a bit of a bend, in the middle, she sits right on her waterline. So when the ship's finally built, I want the red just to be sticking up at the back, at the aft, at the stern, and just to be sticking up at the front. So we've got about four or five millimetres to play with. And what that means is I have to get all of the boat deck stuff in place at the cost of only another five mil worth of pushing the boat into the water. Now, I think that is achievable, um, but it's one of these things uh, that this is stuff that I've simulated as best I can, but I really had to make a guesstimate on the superstructure because, you know, it's all quite lightweight. But what that means is that a little bit too much glue or a few more people than planned actually makes a relative difference. Um, so it's going to be one of these things that we're going to have to solve problems as we go along. But for now, I am reasonably happy that we're in a good place. We've got the showers dripping on the aft section of the boat, that's annoying. Um, <clears throat> we've got about four or five mil to play with for all the additional weight, so funnels and lifeboats, etc. Um, and I think that will be enough. If it's not, the contingency is we'll have to find way elsewhere, and that will be cutting out sections of plastic that aren't useful. Um, it might be um, removing certain things. Uh, I don't know, I might, for example, the first class smoking room, lovely though it is, very difficult to see what's beyond those stained glass windows. So if the worst comes to the worst, that's a weight save there. I can take that out. But, you know, it's one of these things that um, you can plan up to a point. Um, but some of it just comes down to problem solving when you actually get to the point where the problems crop up. Um, so we'll have to wait and see how we go. But for now, I am relatively confident that we're still on course. So there is veranda and palm court. Difficult to see in at the minute. It's very dark in there because of the absence of lighting. That will come in time. Now what you can see is I've added these lovely doors as well. This piece isn't particularly well seated down, but it will be better when it model's done. On this side, I've got these lovely doors closed. And I think, you know, generally you'd expect the doors to be closed. You know, we, this is a ship traveling across the Atlantic in April. Um, it's not gonna be toasty. So you wanna keep the heat in as best as you possibly can. Um, so this one is nicely done up, but on the port side, I've got the doors open. And to do that, I just cut the piece of photo etch in half and then stuck both sides down. Um, and the reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted some people to be coming out. So you can see there's one couple just just walking out now as if they've just finished their cup of tea and they're now going to have a turn around the promenade decks. Um, and it's an idea that occurred to me a few days ago and I really like it because it, it's just another one of those little things that adds a bit more life to the model, makes you feel like something's just moved, makes you feel like the doors have just opened and this couple are about to walk out onto the promenade deck. Um, and it's just another one of those little bits of, you know, scenic interest. You know, you look at it and you go, ah, oh, 
that's another little nice touch, you know, so I'm very happy with it. Um, it's going to be a bit vulnerable, you know, these are very, very fine photo etch parts, um, and until the model is complete, these will be vulnerable. Um, the only reason I've stuck these in yet is really for the video. Um, if I wasn't filming this, I probably wouldn't have stuck these in, because the chances of these getting damaged is high. Um, fortunately, though, you get two spares in the photo etch set, so... Um, I sort of took the risk of having the effect now and just sort of seeing what it looks like and hopefully getting some feedback from people in the comments. Um, and if I do damage these, there's another two spares to go anyway. Um, but there we are. That is the last of the rooms I'm going to do on a deck. And so that is the completed veranda and palm court. Uh, I just rigged up some lights temporarily to a battery just to sort of see how the... Um, how the room would look with lights, uh, and I particularly like this picture, sort of showing a young couple, you know, with light spilling out the room, just about to have a saunter out onto the decks to take in the sea air. Um, so overall, I'm pretty happy with this room, really. Uh, it's come um, it's come out very well, I think. Uh, I like the windows, they were a bit of a faff, but I think they've come out very well, and they look very nice. Lots of light uh, spills out from them, which is ideal, exactly what we want. These rooms are meant to be spacious and airy, you know, so I think it delivers on that. Um, and I like I like the layout of the rooms and how busy they are as well. Um, I like the fact that there's a lot of people there, you know. So that is the end of the Randa Cafe and Palm Court. Um, there's obviously still quite a lot left to do on a deck. Um, there's the grand staircases, but I think realistically uh, it's going to be a long time, probably a matter of months, before I get the um, 3D prints I'm waiting for for that. So I think realistically I'm going to have to look at moving on to other things and just retrofitting them as and when I can. Um, but as I say, lots of things to do still on ADEC. Um, there's a fair few uh, little bits of modelly stuff. There's a couple of vents. Um, there's the two 1.5 ton cranes on the aft section. Um, there's of course all the external lighting, there's the internal lighting. Uh, I want to touch up a few things with a bit of paint here and there, things like door handles. Um, then I need to work out how I'm going to put the boat deck on top of a deck and secure it effectively. Um, and I need to put the ribbing in the a deck ceiling. Um, so there's a fair amount still to go. Uh, and the next few videos will undoubtedly contain that sort of stuff. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, what have you, whack them down below and I'll do my best to get back to you. I do try as hard as possible to get back to comments. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please like and subscribe, usual stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.